people always want to concentrate um, masses in the public space, and you know, and that has been um, a dominant, um, dominant method in nonviolent action. I just want young people, in particular, to explore. You know, alternative methods. For example, there are a lot of things has been done about culture jamming, um, flash mob. I just joined that flash mob. It was so fun, um, and and flash mob in particular is really important because um, when you have a lot of people gathering in the street, um, you risk the chance of being um, repressed by the security forces because they saw you as a threat. You know a bunch of young men in the street, imagine that. And it's really easy for the protests to um, develop into riots. So, so that's very tricky. Flash mob is important in this sense because um, the period of time being used, being spent for protesting is really brief. So you just, you know, being there and do your things and finish it. And secondly, um, it can be really creative. Um, you can dance. You can incorporate theater into your actions. And just recently, I joined this flash mob. There was this campaign calling for a military coup again in Thailand, right? Um, so I, um, with this group in Thailand, um, the the leading activists. Um, have this idea of people mocking um, the campaign. So the campaign is um, titled as Freezing Thai Democracy. So this flash mob campaign um, tries to say that, okay, if Thailand is already frozen, now you should get cold. So people, and you know, amidst the heat and humidity in Bangkok, people um, are asked to wear winter clothes <laughs> and go to the monorail station um, this in this center part of Bangkok and acting like they're really cold, they're freezing um, and you know because we don't want to get people in one area we try to get them moving <laughs> so we hop in um, the monorail going to another station and our final destination was the ice cream place in this department store in order to emphasize that we really call now. So that's the, the campaign I joined.